you know, your remediation happens, right? And there's like multi-step process to make that happen. And then you have to get that feedback and then you have to like kind of track that this event happened. So it's like, um, you know, we want to do a patch, right? So we, we have to go raise a ticket in service now. And then we have to monitor that the ticket in service now has been fixed. And then I have to like track somewhere that a patch was applied. Now I have to go rescan it. Right. And so it's like just even even doing basic things like that become very difficult. And so we're trying to to get to a point where it's a collaboration and it's, it's really a vehicle for change in the environment. So rather than just uh, focusing on, hey, our SLA for critical vulnerabilities is seven days. It's well, what's a realistic timeline for what we're trying to do based on our, our environmental profile. But yeah, this, the second big part, I, th- I would say. So the aggregation is a big piece of it. But I, instead of 80 percent, I'd pr- say it's probably a 50 percent. Yeah. And then the other 30% to get us to that 80 is actually just organizing the data and being able yeah. to keep it up to date. Cause it's great to say, oh, well we can add our assets to an asset group, but if like it doesn't stay up to date, it really doesn't matter because it goes stale, you know, within minutes if, if you're lucky. <laughs> and so the way that we get around that is through automation. So we have, we provide the tracking and the, uh, the organization capabilities. And then the automation, when we talk about automation, is more about automating that stuff as opposed to automating patches because nobody really wants a vulnerability management guy to go in and circumvent your change management process and your patch management process because he said it was important. Um, much as we love the vulnerability management guys, they, uh, they don't know more than the patch management people <laughs> around yeah. the, the system, right? So the way that we the way that we do that is through a rules based system that essentially is meant to reflect a, a vulnerability processing pipeline. So we start by ingesting data from your asset inventory and your vulnerability information, and then we essentially say, well, what type of asset information do you care about, right? And so we're actually allowing you to have access to all of the different metadata from all the different systems that you could possibly ever care about. Um, and then match on any sort of information that you care about, whether that's through like regex or, you know, kind of any sort of matching that you could possibly ever want. And then once you've matched on essentially saying, hey, what is the set of data that we actually want to to match on? What do we want to do with those assets? So uh, most of the time you're going to be defining ownership of assets and risk attributes for those assets so that you can more appropriately make better risk decisions, right? So be able to say, hey, this uh, asset actually is public facing or not public facing, right? And then at the same time, we're going to go in and actually just add an asset to a group. But we want to do that dynamically, right? Because if you wanted to add an asset to a group over and over again, you'd have to predefine every single group, which would just be a giant nightmare. And so what we actually have built is a dynamic templating language, like kind of like the MailChimp uh, language thing. But what it essentially does- This is does, so obviously a feature request that- Oh yeah. Because people were having to do it manually before and complained, and then you had to build this. And it's, it's cool, but like this is so obviously the result of someone's pain. Oh Yeah. For sure. (laughs) Right? And so just being able to say, hey, we actually have 3,000 teams and we just want to assign the asset to the team from ServiceNow. Right? Like, and then as they move in ServiceNow, we want them to auto move in Nucleus. So it's like very, very simple kind of stuff, but it allows you to build out those hierarchies where you can actually say, hey, we actually have a business, whatever, business application in service now and then underneath the business application we actually have other fields that we care about right so i can actually go in and say just uh whatever we'll call it bu and then so it's like i actually can keep that entire nested hierarchy up to date with one rule 